So hi again, everyone. My name is Alina. Yes, I'm indeed developer advocate for Grow VM. Super happy to be here. Super happy to be at JFocus because, in fact, JFocus one, was one of the last conferences I did before COVID started two years ago. And happy to be here in person again. So this is actually the first conference I'm doing in real life since COVID. I'm wondering if, actually for how many of you this is also the first real life conference in two years. So how many? Okay, almost everyone. Nice, I guess you share my excitement for your live conferences again. Okay, let's do this then. So we are talking today about cloud-friendly applications with Growl VM. And let me give you a quick overview of what it actually offers. And in the session, I'll be focusing specifically on Java applications and what you can get out of Growl VM as a Java developer. So a couple of things, because Grow VM is in fact a huge umbrella project, which consists of many components, which enable you to do different things. So one of the things you can get with Grow VM is more performance in JIT mode. So Grow VM has its own new highly optimizing compiler written from scratch and written itself in Java. And it has quite a few of highly aggressive optimizations that make your code run faster. So one kind of easy and immediate things you can do with Grow VM is just switch to Grow VM as your JDK and run your applications as they are. Now, another thing, and that is something we will focus more on in this talk, is native image. So you probably have heard about native image, this technology that allows you to take your Java application, compile it ahead of time, get a native executable out of it, and it will start fast and consume my less memory. And that is basically another huge component of Graal VM, which is native image. And the last but not least, and a part which I myself like a lot, is that Graal VM is also a polyglot VM. So you can run Java on it, and you can run any number of languages, such as JavaScript, Python, Ruby, even LVM languages. All of them you can mix and match and run on Graal VM. And that is really great, because you can get all the best tools and libraries from each language. And in fact, you can go and implement your own language on Graal VM. Uh, so that is an overview, and one more reason why I particularly like GraalVM a lot, it's also a big open source project. So you can see our source code on GitHub, we have quite an active community there, tons of people contributing, tons of people sharing feedback, filing issues, helping us improve it for everyone. So yeah, if you want to see how something like that is being developed, just go on GitHub and see how our team is working on the project there. Now, getting closer to Java, so what you can do with Crawl VM for Java. Uh, one important distinction that I want to make is that there are a couple of ways that you can run Java applications on Crawl VM. And why this is important and why I always emphasize this is because this native image mode, so the ahead of time mode that we see on the right here, is so exciting that sometimes people associate Crawl VM only with native image, but that is not true, right? So Crawl VM is also a full blown. JDK, so you can run your Java applications on Graal VM as you would run on any other JDK. And it's important to know because quite a while I get those questions like how Graal VM is different from a JDK or how is it better or why or when I should choose each. So there is, uh, those are not separate things, right? Graal VM also contains a JDK with all your favorite tools and you can easily use it in JIT mode. And actually with Graal VM, you get those options, right? So you get to choose which one you want to run your applications based on your basically performance preferences. Um, so yeah, that is the important distinction. And in fact, if I'm being completely fair and honest, these are not even all the ways. So as of some time ago, a year ago or something, there is even one more, a third way to run Java on Graal VM. And that is called Java on Truffle. Some of you might know it by the code name as Project Espresso. Um, so we're not going into that details in this talk, but uh, GraalVM has its own language implementation framework called Truffle. And that is basically the way we implemented all those languages like JavaScript and Python and Ruby on GraalVM. And in fact, what we did, we also implemented a JVM bytecode interpreter on GraalVM using the same language implementation framework. So it's kind of implemented in the same way and can more easily interact with all those languages. So if you want to try something like that, or if you're curious, or if you want to have a complete picture of uh, Graal VM for Java developers, in fact, there are three ways that you can run Java on Graal VM. 
And a few words about Grow VM being a JDK, and then we are going into the native image topic. So uh, under the hood, when you get Grow VM builds, it's the same Java hotspot VM, just with a different compiler. So the Grow compiler, which is uh, plugged in into the JVM compiler interface. So everything the rest is the same Java hotspot VM that you usually get with your Open JDK or whatever builds. And uh, yeah, as I said, it has new compilers, so you can get more performance for scroll VM. And uh, we have builds available for Java versions 11 and 17. So yeah, you can run basically any application you have, use the standard tools. Migration is super easy in this scenario when you're using Grawl VM as a JDK, so running your applications in JIT mode. Now, what about native image though? So basically that is the focus of today's talk. So I'm sure you've heard about it before. So that is the actual ahead of time compilation technology in Grawl VM that allows you to take your application and produce a native executable out of it. Uh, what it will do under the hood, it will perform the static analysis, trying to find all the reachable codes, trying to understand everything the application is doing, so that in the result in binary, it only puts the code that is essential for your application to run and eliminates everything the rest. So that is how you get that slim, lightweight binary version of your application. So it will perform the static analysis, it will run initializations and will find all the reachable code and then in the produced exec executable, it will put code and what's also interesting, it will perform what we call heap snapshotting. So at the image build process, it will also uh, build heap and then when your application actually starts, it comes with a pre-populated version of heap. That is basically one of the reasons why it starts so fast, right? Because everything is ready for you to go. And yeah, this is basically the way you build it. So very easy with the native image command that you get with scroll VM. In fact, native image is something you need to install additionally. So it's not in the base download, but using Graal updater, so the GU utility, you can easily install native image and that's how you build it and produce a native app or a shared library. So how do you build your first application? In, in fact, I'm curious how many of you have tried compiling applications with native image? Okay, some, I kind of hope it would be more, but okay, good enough. So how do you build your own application? Um, super easy way, very low effort. You go to our GitHub repo, you clone our demo applications and you just build some of them. So they include quite a few native image applications uh, samples as well. Now, if you'd, you would like to build something custom or something for yourself, there are a few ways. And probably the way that I recommend is leveraging one of those frameworks that work with native image because they will give you a lot of tools and features out of the box and they will simplify some of the um, build aspects and configurations for you. So there are quite a few frameworks that you can leverage. In fact, I think most of major Java application frameworks work well with native image and to talk about a few of them. So the first one is Micronaut. I think you've heard about it before, right? It's quite popular. It allows you to build all kinds of Java applications. So microservices, serverless, any number of things. And it works very well with native image from day one. And I don't think I need to talk about it more because very conveniently there is a session from the Micronaut project lead Graham Roche, I think right after this session of mine in room A1. So yeah, go ahead and check that one. And I'm going there as well, so I think it will be pretty good. Uh, yeah, and if you want to get started with Micronaut, they have this nice launch page where you can configure your project, include all necessary and get started with it or use the CLI utility. And in fact, I believe this CLI utility of theirs, MN, is itself a Java application compiled with native image. So if you ever used it, you kind of interacted with native image already. So that is Micronaut and to show you what kind of applications you can build with it and what kind of performance benefits you can get of native image. Um, this is an example. So I ran this application in JIT mode and in native image mode. So both times on Grawl VM, because you can do both in Grawl VM, right? But you can compare startup uh, performance as you look at those both use cases. So in first scenario here, our application started in something like 3.3 .3 seconds. And that's a basic web server that responds to requests with random items from the list. Then we take the same application, we compile it to native, and all of a sudden it only starts in 168 milliseconds. So much, much faster, it's doing the exact same job, producing the same result, but you can see how much faster it is. 
And uh, in the second uh, part here, what we are measuring is uh, time it takes for the, this application to actually do something valuable, right? So not just to start, but actually serve first request, do some valuable job. And in that case, we see that the difference between running in JIT mode and in native image mode also is quite significant, right? So even when the application is doing this valuable job, right, doing actually what it's supposed to do, you see get way more performance out of it in the native image mode. And if we look at the exact same application from a different angle, right, so we are, if we are trying to visualize and evaluate how much resources it is using, we also see that the difference is quite significant. So here on the right is the exact same micron application running on uh, in JIT mode and on the right in the native image mode and those red vertical lines that is us measuring CPU load and the blue horizontal line that is memory usage. And we, we can say that when we run this application in JIT mode, uh, the CPU is quite busy, right? So something until like 3.5 seconds, it's doing a lot of work because there is a lot of work to do when you run an application in JIT mode. So the JVM has to load classes, parse, start interpreting, start compiling, and it's quite busy in those first few seconds because there is all this work that it has to do. And then it can work on the actual requests that arrive and need to be served. While in the native image mode, you see that there is some work happening at the very beginning, but it's uncomparable, right? So it's way less because all this heavy lifting, all those expensive operations already happened at the image build time. You did them once, so then your application can start significantly faster and don't consume as many resources every single time when it actually does something, right? And I think you can see how that is particularly helpful in uh, for microservices and in cloud deployments where you care about resource usage a lot because that is basically what contributes to the cost of using such infrastructure. So if you can significantly reduce it, but also get the same result, that will be really excellent way to run your applications, especially something like web servers like this, when they're mostly busy when the actual requests arrive and need to be served. And in the meantime, they can or maybe should even use as little resources as possible because there is no valuable job to perform. And one more example of uh, application running in JIT mode and in native image mode is uh, showing the benefits of native image for horizontal scaling of microservices. So if you want to scale your application on the JVM, you uh, need to basically run more instances of the JVM and this way you will be consuming way more memory. While on the native image, it's way more efficient to scale horizontally because as native applications, they share image heap, they share machine code, so they don't consume quite as many resources. So when you are interested in horizontal scaling like this, native image could be a good way to go for you. Now, we talked about Micronaut, looked at a couple of examples, but I think quite a few would be interested in uh, doing native compilation of Spring Boot applications. And there are great news, in fact. So there is Spring Native Project, which is an integration project between Spring Boot and Native Image, in which they incubate support for Native Image. So what we are looking at here is their numbers from, I believe, Spring 1 last year, so something like November last year. And you see how much efficient, how much more efficient Pet Clinic is when running as native image. So those were, I believe, still like work in progress numbers. They are improving them with every release. And I think at the next spring one, we will see even better numbers from them. So uh, the bottom line here is if you are interested in Spring Boot, there is also a way to build and run them as native images. And some more numbers from this pre native project. So you can see how container image size right, gets significantly smaller Run, running on native versus running on the JVM. So the same applies to all the aspects, right? Container image size, startup time, and memory usage. And one more, I think, cool example of using native image. So if you know this jhipster project, there is also a way to run jhipster applications as native images. So they have a blueprint called jhipster native, and when you uh, get it and you configure set up your project you can then compile it as native image and it will start significantly faster So for example, the application I've built started is something like 0 0.7 seconds But again, this wasn't the best machine and I think you can get way lower than that and that is basically an easy way to bootstrap and easily and fast run a whole uh, web application 
Now, there are a few more things that you can do with native image. So I think it's cool already, but there are a couple more things that you can do with it. So what about peak performance though? I get that question once in a while. So if native image is being compiled ahead of time, right? So what do we do about peak performance? Because we know that when we are running on the JVM, it is very important that there is this dynamic code execution and based on the profile and feedback, the JVM can improve the peak performance of your application. So in fact, it is more challenging uh, when compiling things ahead of time, right? When you don't have that profiling feedback yet, but there is a way to tackle it and it is called uh, profile guide optimizations. So you can run your application in a JIT mode, collect that profiling information, and then feed it to the native image builder at the image build time. And this way you can build a native executable, which is aware of the runtime behavior of your application. And this way it can achieve quite significant peak performance. And uh, that is uh, something already available in Grow VM. It's available in Grow VM Enterprise, which is a commercial version of Grow VM. And to talk a bit more about memory management in native image. So up until recently, we only had serial GC in native image, which was good for uh, some basic applications. But if you want to do some more advanced configuration, you have a couple more options available to you. So you can use G1GC. And in fact, it's very helpful if you want to achieve even better peak performance. So for that, the recipe would be use profile guide optimizations and use G1GC. And most likely you will get the best peak performance for native image. Or in fact, if you don't want to do any GCs at all, you can use Epsilon GC. But even with serial GC, so that default option that has been available for longest time, you can still get quite a decent performance and we've been working on improving it in the past couple of releases. So I think in 22.0, we changed the default policy a bit. So now we can get better peak performance even with serial GC as well. Now, what about monitoring performance and, uh, for example, JFR integration? In fact, JFR is compatible with native image, so you can build native image that is aware of JFR functionality and then observe its behavior when you are running your application. So this support was introduced some time ago and it is still work in progress, I would say, in some ways, but quite a few events already available so you can monitor and observe your application behavior with JFR as well. And one more thing, so if you want to learn more about native image, I don't think I will include quite everything in this session. There is an article we published recently on InfoQ, so all things native image. Please check it out if you would like to learn more. And I believe they also have follow-up sessions, uh, sessions uh, articles from all those frameworks that are integrated with native image and from some companies that are using native image and how was their experience with native image and what they learned about it. Now, if you want to use native image, I think using our Gradle and Mabel plugins would be very helpful for you. So those are official plugins from our team. They also offer out-of-the-box support for JUnit testing. So uh, this is very helpful if you would like to use native image specifically in your production or maybe in your pet projects. And a few things that are rather new in native image, so some things that happened lately. Uh, this first thing is something I'm very excited about. So in the last release, we introduced this quick build mode. So if you ever tried to compile a, net, a Java application with native image, more specifically, if that's a bigger application, right? So doing a lot of things, you could have noticed that build times take quite a while, right? Because it has to do quite a bit at the image build time. So analyze the whole application, optimize it, compile it. It can be quite a while. Uh, that's why we introduced this new quick build mode. So passing a certain flag at the image build time, uh, we'll switch you to this kind of developer quick build mode, which will be much faster so you can get results faster, but we only recommend this for development purposes. So when you're actually developing an application, this is the way to go because you will get faster builds, faster results, and can get kind of quick feedback from how your application performs, whether it compiles correctly, whether it behaves correctly, but it does so at the cost of the runtime performance. So in this quick build mode, it performs fewer compilations. So uh, for production, you would still want to use the default mode with the full optimization so you could get better runtime performance. But for development purposes, where you're only building your application, quick build mode is quite helpful when you just want to get results for yourself faster. And this is a brand new feature. We just introduced it in the latest release. So really looking forward to your feedback and your measurements. If you tried it, please send us feedback. Could be on social media, could be on GitHub. Would be very much appreciated. 
And to illustrate that thought, so uh, here we did measurements of two applications. So on the left, that is a sample application that I ran. And uh, we see that in quick build mode, right, so with the dash or B flag passed, the compilation times is almost the, sorry, the overall build time is almost twice as fast. I mean, it will largely depend on the application, so how big it is and what is the machine that you are running on and other things. But quick build mode can be quite as fast as you can see, like twice faster than the default mode. And on the right, we are measuring quite a bigger application. So in fact, on the right, we were measuring uh, how much time it takes for us to compile with native image our compiler itself. So our compiler, Graal compiler, is itself written in Java, and when you're getting Graal VM builds, you're getting a version of Graal VM compiler compiled with native image, so you can use it for faster startup. So here on the right, we are measuring total build time and the method compilation time, because compilation is not the only st thing that is happening in the image build process, right? There are other things like the analysis and so on. So compilation is a significant part of the image build process, but not the only one. So we see that for the libgraal, so the version of Graal compiled with native image, method compilation time got significantly faster. So something like, I would say, four times faster. And the impact on the overall image build time is, uh, what, almost around 40%, I would say. So it speeds up the compilation itself quite a bit and contributes uh, quite a bit as well to the total build time. And this is a new feature, so yes, yeah, looking your, for your feedback, but also we plan to improve it even further. So our plans are to improve the runtime performance in this mode, but also see if we can speed up other stages on the image build process as well, not just the compilation. And yeah, another improvement, which is also related to developer experience, which I think is very important, is build times improvements, but outside of this quick build mode, right? So even when you are compiling in your default mode, we've been working on making sure that the image build times get faster over the past couple of releases. And here we see how that worked out for the Spring Pet Clinic application and how those build times changed over the time. And you can see that we got something from two minutes, 50 seconds to two minutes, five seconds over, I would say four releases, right? Or five, I guess. So yeah, working on making sure that the default compilation mode is fast as well. And one more thing, which I think is also very cool. So we recently changed the uh, build output that you are seeing when you build native image to give you more insights into what is happening. So for example, how many classes we see and how much time was spent in GC and other insights to give you more understanding of what is happening during the image build process and how you can improve it even further. So I think this is very helpful. Also, let us know how you like it and if there is, you think, something we can improve about it additionally. Oh, sorry, I skipped the slide. And yeah, we also have a GitHub action for Graal VM. So if you want to, to integrate it into your GitHub workflows, it's very easy. So you can just leverage our GitHub action. It works for both our community edition and enterprise edition. Yeah, see if you can use it for yourself and for your projects. And yeah, I guess the biggest update looking at community's feedback in the last release is that we now also have Apple M1 builds. So quite a few people were very happy about it. To me personally, I'm more excited about the quick build mode because I think more people would benefit from it. But looking at the community feedback, M1 builds are the biggest feature of the last release. So good to know that. And yeah, if you're a happy M1 machine owner, you can now also use Graal VM on it as well. And this is actually a very good example of our community uh, collaboration. So it was a GitHub issue with over 100 comments and people actually helped us test it and build it and provide feedback as we went because we didn't even have the infrastructure when M1 was first launched. So yeah, great community contributions, very grateful for it. And to give you an example of how uh, others are using native image, so this is uh, one that I particularly like a lot, and this is from Alibaba. So in fact, they're using native image in production because they are deploying applications to the cloud, and they were very much interested in reducing startup times and memory use for their applications. And uh, yeah, what we are looking at here is a typical microservice application. So uh, with Spring Boot, Tomcat, MySQL, and other things, and it was quite large, as you can see. So by default, it started in something like 60 seconds, and they got it down to three with native image. So around 20x speed up, and they are happily using it still in production. They said they even tested it during their biggest 
sales day, so under extremely high load and it performed quite well. They're very happy about it. And another example, so this is not native image, but I think it's a quite interesting one. So Facebook are also using uh, Graal, Graal VM to run their applications faster in JIT mode. So not the image, but in the native image, but the Graal compiler in the JIT mode. And they see something like 10% reduction in the CPU usage ever since they switched to Graal VM. And they said it was a very smooth ride, so no major issues, quite happy about it as well. And we have this cool release roadmap, which I think we'll also publish on the website. So how our releases are happening, we have four feature releases a year. So every three months we shape something new, you get new features, we get feedback from you, which I think is quite good. And if you want to plan for uh, when you need to migrate, we have this information on the website as well. So you can adjust your plans to grow VM releases. And if you want to get started, uh, we have two versions of Graal VM, that is Community Edition and Enterprise Editions, both you can get from GraalVM.org, and uh, yeah, or you can use it on Oracle Cloud as well. Uh, the best way for you to get started, just go and download from Graal VM, and if you are looking for updates, we have a Twitter account, we have a very active Slack workspace with something like, something like 2,000 people, or we have a mailing list if you rather, rather prefer send an email. And I think that was it that I had. Uh, are there any questions? Thank you so much, Alina. Thank you. So. There was a hand, if you want to pass a mic. Okay, or, who uh... was the first? Okay, I think I will be passing the mic. Hi, I just wanted to ask, what are the most common obstacles when moving to an, a, to an existing code base um, to Graal VM? Mm -hmm. If I may ask a follow-up question, do you mean native image or do you mean in general? No, I meant native. Native, right? Um, so with native image, uh, depends on what your application is doing and which dependencies you are using, right? So sometimes the libra libraries would not be compatible out of the box. It means that you would probably, in some cases, need to add configuration for things to work, right? So it's possible, but you need to produce that configuration if a certain library that you are using isn't compatible with native image just yet. Um, there are a couple of things that we are doing in that direction. Uh, some of them are that we have a tracing agent that can help you produce that configuration automatically. That will help. Uh, also, it helps if you're using one of those frameworks already integrated with uh, GraalVM native image. So they will take some of that configuration on themselves rather than you doing it manually. So I would say that could be an obstacle. And I guess it also depends on what uh, what goals you're trying to accomplish, right? So if you care more about startup performance and resources usage, then it's definitely the way to go. If your main preference is peak performance, I would suggest probably go with Grow VM JIT because that will give you most likely more peak performance. But if you would optimize for like ba balance, balancing all aspects, then native image is a good way to go as well. So those thing, two things I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who was next with questions? Uh, I think the gentleman over here or the... Well, I think it was uh, quite related to, to what he asked. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, I mean, that was a kind of similar question. Uh, if I want to justify, for example, a company, uh, let's start using RALVM. I guess there are a lot of uh, um, questions on the air, what's going to happen, how's going to be the maintenance performance, mm -hmm. what challenges might be maintaining an application in comparison to a traditional VM. Uh, everything sounds very good, uh, better startup times, uh, memory usage. Which one would be the biggest disadvantage of using Graal VM today? People always ask those tricky questions, so they always want me to say what's bad in Graal VM. I mean, yes to no. <laughs> What's the uh, yeah, cost? again, so if you want to achieve best peak performance, I mean, you could, you could do PGO and G1, but also in general, if you care less about startup and resources usage and most what you care about is peak performance, I would suggest do grow VMJ. That is the way to go, right? So because still runtime feedback is important, and with grow VMJ, you will 100% get best peak performance. Mm. You can also experiment with native image, though. Other disadvantages, I mean, if you have huge existing application, could be the case that you will 
run into some issues. So probably you will not just run native image command and immediately compile it, right? So it could be a few things that you need to look at. Could be not, right? So you could be could be go very smoothly. But migration would be slightly easier in the jet mode and in native image mode would may need some configuration from you. But then again, if you're starting from scratch and especially if you have a chance to use one of those frameworks, so I talked about Micronaut, but there's also Spring Boot and Quarkus and Halidon, so any of those frameworks will help you. Mm -hmm. So you're starting from scratch, um, there should not be any problems. So in fact, now it's a very good time to, if you want to start a new project, to do it, to do it native image friendly. So it should not be any problem at all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, then I'll ask a question. Go ahead. So, uh, in many cases, we are running on uh, using some containerization. We are often using mm -hmm. Docker, running this on Kubernetes. Right. And there is a trend minimizing your Docker images, uh, have them as slim as possible. If we go for the uh, native build, then what should we actually need on the base image? Can we use the so-called scratch image that doesn't have anything on it? That is an excellent question. It felt, in fact, it, f it feels a bit sad up because I should have said that it's my presentation and I never did. So yeah, two more things about native image. What you can do is you can build so-called mostly static na native images and you can build them fully static. And then in fact, you can use them in a from scratch container because that will be fully contained. So you can put everything that you need in the native image and don't have anything in the base image at all. So if you want to go for the slimmest possible, probably deployment version, that is the way to go. Just look at it on our website so you can do build it uh, mostly native, right? So linking against everything except for libc, I believe, or build it fully linked and then you don't need any external dependencies at all and you can get very slim deployment for your application. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, then I have another question. So I guess some of people here are not only using Java, but some probably are already uh, using Kotlin. Right. And Kotlin has its own support for native. How does Kotlin native compare to Graal VM native? Say we're using probably Kator, uh, which mm -hmm. is a quite common framework. Yeah. I had that question a while and I looked at it. To be honest, uh, there were some ways in which native image was better, but I wouldn't recall it immediately. So yeah, you can try with native image, still Kotlin and compare, but to be honest, I would probably need to follow up on that because I, lo I looked at it, but I don't remember it at the moment. So yeah, I would need to follow up on that. Thank you. There are some people from JetBrains here on the conference, so <laughs> we can probably figure it out. Makes sense. Any more questions? So if you would rather ask privately, I will be around. And also I have some GraalVM stickers. So if you want to get them, just come here and I will give them to you. Thank you so much, Alina. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening.